Utah has so many professional artists who work in all different kinds of mediums, and now is a great time to see their work in local markets, in, in local art markets and art shows. And as I can testify, there is something so special about finding a piece of original art or non-original art, a print, anything that really speaks to you. But framing can be a challenge. There's so many options, it's hard to decipher which to choose. So we asked artist Claire Tolstrip to come today and give guidance on choosing the right frame for your piece of art. So first, Claire, we're so happy to have you. Yes. Tell us about the kind of art that you do. So I paint mostly with oils. I do um, like mostly florals is what I'm drawn to the most. I do a few landscapes, a few figures, but mostly oil painting. And those are things that people are really attracted to right now. Flor florals are huge, like ac across clothing, across home decor, and, and of course in painting, and these are just lovely. So depending on those different kinds of, of um, the art that you like and are drawn to, how, what role does a frame play with art? Well, so the number one role of the frame is to protect the art. But after that, it really can be an extension of the art and kind of set the tone of how do you want to show the piece? Do you want it to be more of a modern look? Do you want it to be more of a classic, traditional piece? And kind of tie it into the room that you have it. I think you're, and you're absolutely right with that because I think as much as it is to protect, I think of it, you walk into a museum and you think, oh my goodness. Or when you walk into someone's home and maybe they have a wall with five things framed the same and it's such a fun feeling to it or it makes such a big difference. And you've brought so many examples today of different ways to do it. Give us some general guidelines on what you like and what to look for depending on, you know, maybe it's a printed piece versus an oil. Are there guidelines for those things? So with oil paintings, you want to have them exposed. You don't want to put it under glass because there is so much, um, well, first of all, it's already protected with a varnish. And then um, also there's some, some like details that you can see up close. And so here is an example of a very clean kind of modern look with an oil painting that I did. This is water lilies. And actually this one doesn't have a frame. This is called a cradled panel and I have gold leafed the edge. So if you want to have a nice clean look, then you can Fun. just hang it on the wall Tell exactly like side. that. So um, if you want it to be more of a modern look, now I'm going to switch it up really fast and get a um, very traditional ornate frame. And you can see the difference when I just slide it in here. It makes a big difference with well, the way it, really it shows. Does. Kind of takes it from a traditional or a more modern look, like you said before, to kind of a traditional something you may see in a museum. Exactly. More of a museum quality framing. Exactly. And wow. I can show you that That's example um, over here again too. This is a um, very clean modern frame. It's called a float frame because you can see the entire painting and it, the frame doesn't come up over the edge. And so that is another modern, clean way to frame. And, and very, very beautiful. Now are you, we get so, to put and this So I can put this up here and you can see how it changes the whole look of the piece. Wow, look at that. With just uh, the way the frame is. And, and it might be your personal taste or it might be the room you're putting it in, depending on how you want to frame it. So really, how do you choose the right size frame? Is it solely preference? Is it based on what's in the frame? What's the best way to choose the right size of frame if you wanted a thinner vers versus kind of thicker, heavier look? Well, sometimes it can be how much importance you want to give the piece if you want to put a really thick frame on there. And just, yeah, if you want it to look clean and modern, you might want to do it smaller, but also, like for instance, I brought some pieces that are not mine. This is an artist, Betsy Clegg, and I had this really small little ginkgo leaf drawing done, and I wanted to give it a really big statement. So I got this big frame with this big mat to put in it, and um, I just love how it's hanging in my home right now. And I love this, so how, and with that, do you think it's more of a feeling, so go in, take your piece of art or whatever print you have and try it out with a few things? When do you know when to use a mat versus just going straight to a frame? Well, um, so this is, a, this is a drawing, an ink drawing. So if you have a drawing or a sketch or a print, this is a print that I've done, you wanna put it under glass. And I think that mats are really important because they really add just kind of 
when you're doing a paper piece, they add a lot of weight to it. Yeah, and I think you're right. As you've shown these pieces, you can really see the different ways that you emphasize a painting or drawing a sketch. Anything based on the frame you choose and the mat that you do. Um, any other suggestions for framing on a budget? So for framing on a budget, I love to get like vintage frames. And so this is a vintage frame that I got and I've put one of my pieces in. Um, also this landscape right here is a vintage frame. Um, and that is a great way to frame on a budget instead of going and getting a custom frame done. Uh, kind of a unique thing that I have done. This is an artist, Megan Gray, and I love her tiny, tiny landscapes. And what I've done to do affordable framing with these is I got a picture frame and I wrapped the glass in linen and then I glued the painting on top. Such and a this fun is idea. the same it kind of idea so with this one. Yeah, such a fun idea. Claire, thank you so much. These are just such a neat display and so many options for people. Thank much you. appreciated. Thanks.